Is this a portable QRP operator's ideal travel antenna? Let's review it and find out. Hello, I'm Mark, AA3K, and welcome to another episode of AA3K On The Go. Today, we're gonna to take a look at the Wonder Wand Mag Loop antenna. Is it a good choice for portable QRP operating? We ran some tests, and I'll let you know shortly. In late 2021, I was supposed to take a work trip to Korea. Overall, the trip it was supposed to be two weeks long, It'd be a bit of a downtime, uh, a weekend stay, lockdowns in Korea, not allowed to travel much. I probably would not be able to get out much in the evenings or on the weekends. So I applied for and got my Korean reciprocal amateur radio license, HL5 stroke AA3K. And I intended to bring my Yesu FT817, some wire, uh, painter's tape, and put the wire up around the hotel room in the evening uh, and over the weekend. And on a major uh, amateur radio online retailer, I spotted the Wonder Wand Mag Loop on sale as an open box item. And I said, why not? Perfect size to travel, uh, no taping up a wire around the room, and let's give it a shot. I've seen some other impressive results from Mag Loop antennas, so I bought it. The trip, unfortunately, was canceled in literally the last minute due to Korea instituting additional quarantine requirements with no exceptions. So rather than find ourselves trying to compress two weeks worth of work into four days, if that even was the limit of the quarantine, 10 days, and not knowing if we'd be quarantined longer, preventing us to even performing the work and such, we elected to cancel the trip. Okay, so what are the pros of this little antenna? Well, it's very lightweight and compact. Take the loop off, coil it up, use a twist tie to hold it together, or maybe a short piece of Velcro. It weighs barely six or eight ounces as a total weight, and the travel size, everything basically fits in the palm of your hand. Uh, it does tune easily. You adjust the tuning capacitor until you hear uh, the receiver noise peak. I find I have to go just a tiny bit more clockwise. Uh, and then my SWR is virtually one-to-one. -one. It hears surprisingly well for a small size. But the downsides are, it can be a little bit tricky to put together. These ends are just spade lugs and they want to fly all over the place. They probably could be replaced with eyelets, but then you have to worry about losing the nuts that hold them in place. Uh, the efficiency of the antenna is mag loop efficiency. It does go down significantly as you go lower and lower in frequency. As I said, this will tune down to 7 megahertz, 40 meters. Efficiency is in the single digits by uh, an online calculator. You can easily or accidentally crush the loop while, it's op while you have it set up. And as the test will show, it's just not as efficient as a, a long piece of wire much closer to your operating wavelength. During the course of the video, uh, I will show you the test setup I used and show you the data I collected. Welcome to the AA3K On The Go Indoor Studio, also known as my ham shack, in the corner of the basement, in the corner of the very, very cluttered and messy basement. Need to do some work on that. So here is the star of the testing of the Wonder -to Wand Mag Loop. I set it up on my little tripod using a cell phone holder, cell phone tripod holder, and I've tried things both ways with the cell phone holder clamping top to bottom on the top terminals to the bottom of the tuning case and sideways with a little wooden block to give it something to hold on to as the cell phone holder does not crank small enough. I have not seen any, in my pre-testing, I have not seen any differences in performance of the antenna, but rather than potentially accidentally shorting out the terminals with the uh, vinyl pads that are built into the cell phone holder, uh, I went with the horizontal map. So here is a slightly distant version showing the whole setup on the tripod. For the testing setup, disregard all the stuff on the left of the table as I was playing with my FT5 at the time, as well as my little 
solar charger, battery pack, and a glass of water to keep me company. We have the Yaesu FT817 Digirig interface for Whisper. And the $60 laptop, also known by some other ham radio YouTubers as the Jenkopotamus. It works very well, as I showed in my hamming from a hotel room video. For comparison, I set up my KM4 ACK and fed half wave. Here is the transformer end tied off to a step in the ground stake that I picked up at Tractor Supply Corporation for less than $10. I forget the exact amount. Really handy to punch into the ground to set up and you pull out in a second and on the way. And I use the K8 MRD YouTuber trick of attaching the end of the wire to a push-up mast, or in this case a fiberglass mast, and just leaning it against a tree on the side of my property. And for that antenna, I did connect it back to the 817 through an LDG choke, just to make sure the RF ended at the end of the coax cable. And... And here is the data I collected comparing the one-to-one -one mag loop against my KM4 ACK NFED half wave. I'll upload the data and to the web and make it available if you'd like to peruse all the ins and outs. But here is the summary page. Uh, I ran transmitting on the mag loop and the NFED half wave on 10, 15, and 20 meters. And I'll let you know my anecdotal evidence for 40 meters comparing the mag loop against the NFED half wave. 10 meters was not particularly hot the day I ran these tests, which was actually Easter Sunday. I only had a total of, uh, the mag loop was only heard five times uh, on whisper receivers, whereas the NFED half wave was heard 26 times. But it still had a decent of just under 3,000 kilometers maximum range, but that pales in comparison against the NFED half waves maximum distance of 16,500 kilometers. Uh, the mag loop fared far better on 15 meters and 20 meters, being heard a total of 63 times, out to almost 12,000 kilometers on 15 meters, and being heard 96 times, but only out to a distance of about 6,700 kilometers. Whereas the NFED half wave was almost had three times as many receptions and out to almost 17,000 kilometers on 15 meters, and for 20 meters, almost 500 receptions five times as many and being heard out to almost 19,000 kilometers. Uh, averaging the signal, the averaging it all together, the signal to noise ratios were maximum the NFED half wave beat in all conditions as compared to the mag loop, but the NFED half wave does have a larger capture area. That's not appropriate here. Averaging it all together, overall the NFED half wave was four times, had four times as many receptions of its whisper transmit signals uh, at almost two and a half times the maximum distance, 1.3 times the average in distance, and 10 dB better in averaging it all together. The NFED half wave was heard almost four and a half times more than the mag loop antenna uh, and almost two and a half times further away. For the overall signal to noise, the NFED half wave had a much stronger signal, uh, but the mag loop edged it out a little bit in receive, probably because it just couldn't receive the more weaker signals at the larger capture area of the NFED half wave done did. I also looked at <clears throat> the how many stations that each antenna received uh, during the whisper transmits. And again, the NFED half wave, probably due to its larger capture area, won in almost every single case except 
for 20 meters where the I'm sorry, the mag loop got a little edge better in minimum received signal strength. Uh, I also did, as my, mainly for just giggles, uh, standard deviation uh, on 10 meters. The two antennas, all of their received signals were very close to the mean, uh, but that did start spreading out a little bit more on 15 meters and 20 meters, but not as much as I might have suspected. For my anecdotal evidence on the one-to-wand -wand mag loop for 40 meters, I've used it for about five hours attempting to make FT8 contacts. Uh, during that whole period, I only have two FT8 contacts, uh, but several times I did th throw the KM4 ACK NFED half wave up quickly in a tree and was rewarded immediately with contacts on that antenna. So the very small size of the loop compared to the wavelength of 40 meters uh, is definitely contributing to a very low efficiency factor and from an online web calculator and basically basing it off of 14 gauge wire, uh, the efficiency at 40 meters is in the single digit percent range. Will this antenna get you contacts in the field? Yes, but they'll be difficult. Uh, you have the low power challenge of QRP on top of the low efficiency of a mag loop antenna. Uh, I intend to try making a bigger loop out of copper tubing, finding a way to support it such that the body of this or the matching unit does not take all the stress of a larger loop weighing over a pound or two of copper and see if the efficiency and the uh, usefulness of the antenna improves. Look forward to that in a separate video. Hey, thank you for watching. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. And this is Mark, AA3K73.